Country Hoedown brought to you by Procter & Gamble Company of Canada Limited and Four Just Men sponsored by Texaco Canada Limited will not be seen tonight but will return next week over most of these stations. Time was when what you are now hearing was the start of jazz. The third Canadian all-star jazz show. Presented by... Timex, the fine watch leader throughout the world. And by the Polaroid Land Camera, the only camera in the world that gives you a finished picture in 60 seconds. Tonight's show stars Phyllis Marshall, Peter Appleyard, Mike White, Jimmy Coxon, Jerry Toth, Roy Smith, and Ed Carroll. This hour produced and directed by Peter McFarland. Now your host, Fred Davis. Thank you. Thank you and welcome to a brand new all-star jazz show and a new season of jazz specials. Now listen to this. You know, time was when jazz was simply homemade music played just for fun. And we imagined it might have looked and sounded like this. That's great. We could have recorded it. First of all, <laughs> let's meet tonight's uh, headliners. First of all, on lead kazoo, Phyllis Marshall. Thank you, Fred. <laughs> Peter Appleyard. Mike White. <laughs> Jimmy Coxon. And uh, Ed Caram. For your two seats. <laughs> Thank you very much. You know, these, uh, <clears throat> these are some of the uh, do-it-yourself instruments of the old-time spasm bands of New Orleans. I want you to know that it's only a step away to a very new jazz band, the all-Canadian band, which has brought in stars from right across the country. Well, let's begin now by meeting them. First of all, on drums from Toronto, Ron Rooley. From Timmins, Ontario, on piano, Norm Amadio. From Hamilton, on bass, Murray Lauder. From Vernon, BC, on guitar, Ed Bickert. Saxophone. From Fort William, Roy Smith. From Toronto, Bernie Pilt. Also Toronto, Jerry Todd. And from Montreal, Nick Ayu. And from Vancouver, Jack Taylor. Trombone. From Coleman, Alberta, Ron Collier. Here's Vancouver's Dave Pepper. From Toronto, Ross Cully. Montreal, Butch Watanabe. And from Lindsay, Ontario, Ronnie Hughes. Then the trumpet from Toronto, Bob Van Evra. From Winnipeg, John Frost. From Kitchener, Eric Froggett. And Montreal's Herb Spaniard. And the big band's leader from Ottawa, Ed Carroll.
home here in the studio, and that fine big band opener by Ed Caram made good use of three of the instruments basic to the beginnings of jazz. Drums, trumpet, and the piano. And from here, we're going to follow jazz and its development by featuring some of Canada's finest exponents of jazz on these three instruments. After Time Out for Timing. Timex created for the ladies this time The most beautiful dress watch And it's called Golden Time The design is perfection It's a treasure to wear And you'll notice it has a most elegant air A most elegant, elegant, elegant air You'll notice it has a most Elegant air, you will like Timex styling and it's dustproof indeed. Well, it's so shock resistant that it's all guaranteed. Timex really a fine watch with a price more than fair, and you'll notice it has a most elegant air. An elegant, elegant, elegant air, you'll know. A most elegant air. Shall we let Russ take over now that we've done so well? Well, okay, Russ, you're on for a little hard sell. Well, thank you, fella. Ladies, the new Timex, designed especially for you, come in a variety of attractive models. All are fashion years ahead in graceful styling. You see, Timex is truly a fine watch of the highest quality workmanship made to last as long as any very expensive watch. Yet these high-style, distinctive watches cost an unbelievably low $16.95. One more glamorous reason why more people buy Timex than any other watch in the world. Well, they say that rhythm is the root of all jazz and that it started with the drum. One of the things that makes jazz a unique kind of music in this part of the world is that it's so full of a variety of rhythms. And to give you some idea of this endless variety of jazz rhythms, we'd like you to listen now to the drums of our jazz drum sextet, as they blend rhythms from many sources into one of the show's specially prepared features. And the number starts as jazz started with the African drum.
see that it's not only the steadiness of the rhythm, but the endless invention that makes jazz live. Right now, I'd like you to meet the uh, man behind the tents up there. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Peter Appleyard. Recently, uh, one of the most tuneful offshoots of drumming has been the development of the vibraphone in the uh, small jazz group. And, uh, Peter, how long have you been playing vibes now? Oh, around about eight years now, Fred. Eight years? And you were a drummer before that, of course. Yes, I originally started out on drums. As a matter of fact, I still play them once in a while, like I'm going to do this evening. That's right, and this is the spot, so you can prove what you've just said right now. Here, then, is the Peter Appleyard Quartet, featuring uh, Peter on vibes and drums, and Gershwin's I Got Rhythm.
drumming and the rhythm of jazz up to this moment. Our next item will be the trumpet. Right now, we'd like to take time out for Timex with Russ Thompson. Well, thank you, Fred. Friends, look at your watch. Now, look at this watch. I've been asked by the Timex people to give you an actual live dramatic demonstration dramatizing the practically indestructible qualities of Timex waterproof watches and to show you how really waterproof and shock resistant a Timex watch can be. And then you decide for yourself if your own watch could take this kind of a beating. And of course, still keep running. We have the slim Timex Marlin, just like the one I have on my wrist, strapped to the propeller of this outboard motor. Now we'll submerge it in the tank like so. Okay, we're ready. Let's go. Now keep in mind that this Timex Marlin is being whipped through water at nearly 2,000 revolutions per minute. All right, I think we've had enough. Now, let's see how it took this beating. Up she comes. Let's take a look at the watch. Yes, there it is. It's still running perfectly. As handsome and fine as this watch is, it takes a licking and keeps on ticking. Timex shows you just how waterproof and shock resistant a fine watch can be. Scientifically sealed against water, dust and dirt, Timex offers you all the elegance and quality of the most expensive watches for only, and this is amazing, 1095. Other fine Timex styles are priced from 795 for these rugged, good looking watches to just $18.95 for the ultimate in modern watch design, the Timex self wine Well, there you are. A great many reasons why more people buy Timex than any other watch in the world. So tomorrow, you go to your Timex dealer and buy a Timex watch for yourself. The first tunes that jazz inherited originated from the way people felt as they went about in a simple, hard-working, everyday existence. They made up a music to be happy by and to be tired by. There were work shouts and field haulers, sorrow songs and croons, and there were street cries. I'm not sure that's how the blues really got started, but it's, uh, it's one story. Actually, the melodies were passed from ear to ear for decades to be written down for the first time by blind horn-playing W.C. Handy, just before the First World War. Now, as for Phyllis Marshall, she doesn't sell strawberries for a living, obviously, but really the blues, of which there isn't anything finer than Phyllis's and W.C. Handy's. That evening sun goes down. I hate to see that evening sun go down.
can be That man's got a heart Like a rock cast in the sea Or else he wouldn't have gone Like a fish, eyes like a frog. But when he loves me, I'll ooh, I say I love that man. Like a schoolboy loves his pie. I'm gonna love that man. New Orleans had many bands that played a livelier, more rhythmical music than orchestras to be found in uh, opera houses or concert halls. And more important, it was free. The loudest sound you heard in the street was uh, from the horns and brass of the marching bands. Now, most of the early jazz men played in these marching bands, and they also picked up extra money on the side by working in smaller groups. Now, these groups rented themselves out to be hauled around town in horse-drawn wagons to promote everything from prize fights to dances. Now, obviously, these bandwagons uh, didn't have really enough room for everybody, particularly the trombone player who, who needs a lot of room. So he and the instrument used to hang out over the tailgate. And thus, the jazz they played came to be known as tailgate jazz. Would you like to give us a sample, a few bars of tailgate? <laughs> Part of this is getting down. Let me, uh, oh, let me help you. <coughs> Simple, oh. right. Thanks, Mike. You want me to hold the horn or you? <laughs> Thank you. Well, you know, in the old days, when two of these wagons would meet in the street, the, the men would uh, try to outplay each other in what was then called a cutting contest. Well, here's a jazz band with up-to-date musical ideas that would have cut them all. Mike White and his imperial jazz band with Mac the Knife.
Another modern development of jazz that features the basic horn and echoes the early brass bands of New Orleans is the big brass section of our all-Canadian band. But what a difference. Here's Eddie Caram now with an arrangement especially prepared for the show, which features the big sound of the trumpets and trombones. It's called Straight, No Chaser. <laughs> Thank you. 
There's one instrument we haven't touched on yet that has become pretty fundamental to jazz today, yet it wasn't in on the beginning at all. That latter-day jazz innovation called the piano. Uh, there's something else, Fred. Well, Alan Miller. Something that uh, also wasn't on the scene when jazz began. This must be the 60-second Polaroid land camera. You're very right. Now, may I take your picture? Which old relic do you want, the piano or me? Well, let's get both of you. Uh, <laughs> why don't you stand under the lamp, Fred? Okay. And uh, I think you'll find this picture most remarkable for two reasons. First of all, I'll be taking it in very dim light and without a flash bulb. Uh, would you kill the lights in the studio, please? Thank you. Uh, smile, Fred. Here we are. Now, in uh, just 60 seconds, we'll see Fred's picture. Because this, of course, is the Polaroid land camera. Now, you'll notice that I took Fred's picture with the light from one lamp and without a flash bulb. And I could do that because of two remarkable new Polaroid inventions that now take the place of 1,000 flash bulbs right here. These inventions begin with 3,000 speed film. This film is so sensitive to light that it uh, will almost season the dark. It lets you take a 60 second picture anywhere in your home without a flash bulb and with just whatever light may be available, either lamplight or daylight. The other invention is this, the wink light. Now this is not a flash gun, but it provides just enough fill in light to erase shadows caused by normal room lighting. And uh, because of this wink light, which winks very gently, for 1,000 pictures, you need not replace the bulb until that time. Uh, 1,000 pictures would ordinarily mean these many flash bulbs. Uh, 1,000. And that's a saving to you of $100 uh, in flash bulbs. And of course, you're never in the position of missing that important indoor picture because you didn't happen to have a flash bulb handy. Well, let's see how Fred's picture turned out. I hope this is a good one, Fred. Oh, oh. <laughs> there it is, sharp and clear, Fred. Would, uh, would you like to have this picture of the old relic? <laughs> that's a classic. That, that's really remarkable, Alan. Well, this is a must for the uh, family album. Thank well, you very much. It's all yours. I think this proves easily what uh, 3,000 speed film and the wink light can do for your photo album, too. It's now easy, inexpensive, and a lot of fun to take pictures indoors. You don't require flash bulbs, and best of all, you have the finished picture in just 60 seconds. Polaroid land cameras are priced from $92.95. The wink light, just $23.95. Ask any dealer in Canada for a free demonstration. Fred, thank you very much, Alan. Well, at the turn of the century, pianos were almost as common in homes as uh, TV sets are today. But all was not Chopin and Liszt. The newly freed slaves brought to the piano the rhythm of their drums and the flavor of their music, the happy songs and the sad ones. And these remembered tunes and other songs of the day that were picked up by ear were, as they said, uh, torn to tatters or ragged on pianos in uh, saloons and honky-tonks everywhere. And actually, it was this ragtime piano playing that greatly influenced the early jazz. And the first rag tune to be published was called the Maple Leaf Rag. And 60 years ago, it must have sounded very much like this. How about that, Eddie? It's swinging, isn't it? <laughs> and try that. Whoops. <laughs> and I didn't even drop my picture. Well, when New Orleans music came north into Chicago from Dixie, all jazz was then called Dixieland. And it was just a way of playing music by ear. In fact, most of the old-time jazz men couldn't read. And so when music began to be published in quantity in the northern towns, the old-timers would get a hold of a piano player and have him teach them some of the new tunes. It was King Oliver, when he arrived in Chicago, who first added a piano as a permanent part of a jazz group. 
and so created one of the distinctions between Dixieland and Chicago jazz. Well, since then, of course, the piano has become very self-sufficient. And tonight, the keyboard is in for a new kind of treatment, as Jimmy Coxon with Vic Centro develop a jazz idea on accordion, piano, Hammond organ, and harpsichord. of instruments that weren't around at the beginning as we were before. You know, originally there was no saxophone in the old-time jazz band. In fact, uh, it was reduced to the clown in the military band and uh, used only for a comic effect. But when the feeling of jazz as a way of playing uh, spread from the uh, brass to other instruments, of course, it found an ideal form of expression in the saxophone. And today, jazz for sax can't be expressed any better than by the Jerry Toth Quintet.
All-Star Jazz Show, which continues in just one moment, is brought to you by Timex, the fine watch leader throughout the world. And by the Polaroid Land Camera. Snap the shutter and in 60 seconds, your finished picture. Now, 3,000 speed film for indoor pictures without flash bulbs. Well, we've come a long way from the washboard bands in Perdido Street where a homemade music called jazz was made up and played just for fun. And we've been brought up to date on modern jazz by the top groups in the land, and I think they deserve an encore. So for the big curtain call, Ed Caram has taken the melody of the blues song that we've heard played throughout the show and arranged it for Phyllis, Peter Appleyard, Mike White, Jimmy Coxon, and the Canadian All-Stars. So here is Phyllis Marshall. When it rains five days and the stars are dark at night, then you know trouble's taking place and things ain't right. Good morning, and I 
Thank you. Thank you. You know, years ago, uh, I worked with Eddie Caram in Ottawa in small jazz groups, and he didn't even know what end of the baritone to uh, blow into, and now he's become one of the finest musicians in the country. Well, tonight, we've sketched lightly the early developments of three jazz instruments, drums, trumpet, and piano, and featured some of the top modern groups built around these particular instruments. Of course, this isn't the whole story of jazz, nor does it complete the, uh, the picture of what's happening in jazz music today, or where it's going, for that matter. But one thing's for sure, some of the finest, most original modern music today is being created and heard here in Canada. And we're most happy to be able to bring it to you on these Canadian all-star jazz shows. We thank you and good night. <laughs> I saw my baby out traveling a long way from me. Ah, the thunder and the lightning. Ah, they were all so bad. Thunder and lightning, oh, so bad. Cause my baby left me. Canadian gangsters Wayne & Schuster, songs by Della Reese, music by Phil Foster's band, Sunday night on The Ed Sullivan Show. Tuesday night on Star Time, Leslie Nielsen stars in The Crucible, Arthur Miller's play about witch hunting. Tuesday night on Star Time. <laughs>